Come out. That is a beautiful snake. I mean, they definitely come a lot prettier around here, but that is fantastic. Hey, easy, bud. <laughs> Look at him rattling his tail. Good morning, everyone. We had quite a bit of rain overnight and uh, finally a bit of a break from the hot and sunny weather. It's super cloudy this morning, so we're gonna get out and hike around and see what we can kick up. Look at this guy. First find of the day, a box turtle that is tucked in quite nicely. I'm kinda surprised that guy's not crawling around with uh, the nice cool wet weather this morning, but we'll leave him right there. First tarp of the day. Yeah, there's a copperhead in that crack over there. I'm not sure how close we'll be able to get, but It's a pretty big copperhead. Look at that. Just chilling down in this crevice. Always a treat to see these guys in habitat like this. And this is actually the first time I've seen one in this particular area, so really good start. All right, we'll leave this beauty right here. Good first snake of the day. Here's our second box turtle of the day. Little guy. Got a cool stripe on him. There we go. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Yes. That is a gravid female timber rattlesnake. She knows we're here, so I don't know how much time we're gonna have, but that is fantastic. So as always with gravid females, our goal here is to not disturb this snake and leave it as undisturbed as possible so that we can potentially come back in a couple weeks and see her with her babies. Well, that is fantastic. What a beautiful snake. All right, well, it's definitely a bummer we didn't get to get a better look at that timber because it was starting to get agitated, but hopefully we'll be able to return and check up on her in a couple weeks before we leave for our international trip and see her with her babies. But it's also entirely possible she won't have them until after we're gone and uh, probably before we come back. So we'll at least go and check on her one more time before we leave. But man, what a morning. Just two snakes, but they're two good ones. Timber rattlesnake and a copperhead. We're gonna start making our way back to the car now. And if we see anything else, great. If not, I'm pretty happy with how today went. All right, everyone, it's the next afternoon and I am gonna try a little bit of road cruising tonight. The last couple of outings have been really productive on the road, at least compared to uh, the rest of the summer. So I'm hoping that that'll be the case tonight. We're gonna do some passes and hopefully the snakes will be out. Well, this is definitely an unforecasted and unexpected change. Um, it's just pouring now. So I guess we're gonna try to find some dry roads nearby here and see if there'll be some stuff out. I'll drive around out here a little bit, but as usual, I don't expect to see much when it's soaking wet. Well, <laughs> there's our first earth snake of the night. And if tonight goes anything like the last couple of nights, it probably won't be the last. So we'll get him out of the road. This guy's a little bit bigger than the ones we were seeing the other night, though. Maybe an adult female. Well, that's a weird second snake of the night. Tantilla. I mean, I've probably cruised less than five of these ever on this road and uh, probably less than 10 ever anywhere in Georgia. Not what I was expecting to see in the road, but very, very cool nonetheless. This guy's a little bit on the thin side, maybe a female that had eggs this year, but either way, very cool. We'll get a picture and get her out of the road. All right, y'all, well, I am headed home at this point. Um, I think I wasted a lot of the better hours of the night kind of driving around on those wet roads after it rained, uh, just hoping that the rain would get stuff active, which it never does around here. And when it does, it's just seemingly random and completely unpredictable. So wasted a lot of the night with that. So I'm not really surprised we didn't see too much, but I am glad we saw some snakes because, you know, if you've been watching all summer, you know that we had plenty of nights uh, within the last two months where we got completely skunked. So I'm gonna hesitantly call tonight a dub and uh, we'll try again tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Good morning, everybody. It is super early. I'm up at this hour so that I can try to beat the heat this morning and find some snakes. I'm gonna be checking out a few new areas, looking for cotton mouths mostly. Uh, just because they're the thing that I think I'm most likely to actually be able to find during this heat wave that we're in right now. And the population I'm going to be looking for today is pretty special. These snakes are incredibly nice, and uh, hopefully I can show that to you and demonstrate that to you by finding one today. 
I did actually do some more road cruising last night and I saw five snakes, but they were all the same things we've been seeing lately. Uh, I think we had two red-bellied snakes, a brown snake, a big fat earth snake, and a ring neck. So nothing crazy, but hopefully we'll be able to get into some snakes this morning before it gets too hot. Let's see. So I've actually never hiked around at this spot before. Um, I didn't even realize it was here, this little park I'm in. Uh, but I have road cruise cottonmouths around here, and they are fantastic looking. And there's a lot of other potentially cool things that we could turn up here, but I'm just going to walk around a bit, and hopefully we'll be able to turn something up. This heat wave we're going into this week is on another level from anything we've had this summer, so I'm not very optimistic about the next couple of days, nor am I really optimistic about today, but uh, we're going to see. This habitat is a lot more pygmy rattlesnakey than cottonmouthy so far. I know there's going to be some decent creek habitat here somewhere, but uh, this stuff's pretty nice. Oh, this is encouraging. That right there is a snake track. You can see where he's pushed the sand here, 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 and here as he moved. He was crawling upstream, so hopefully that means there's a cottonmouth or some kind of snake right in here. You can see just how little water is in this creek. I'm not sure it's ever a super deep creek, but it definitely isn't very deep right now. Oh, looky there. A cottonmouth. <laughs> I gotta get a stick to wrangle this guy. I definitely can't say for certain if that's the same snake who left those tracks back there, but the size is about what I was expecting. That is really cool. I know it's just a cotton mouth, but it is super rewarding to uh, be able to set my mind to something and accomplish it. Especially during this time of year, which is just so brutal for herping, especially this year. But that is fantastic. Let's get a better look at him. How's it going, dude? Oh, <laughs> straight underwater. Well, he uh, pretty quickly retreated underwater and it's just chilling on the bottom right there. It's kind of cool actually, because a lot of people will say cotton mouths do not go underwater. When uh, that's clearly not true. They do go underwater and they will hide underwater. And I know quite a few people who have gotten bit by a cotton mouse underwater. Very cool. Let's see if we can get this guy up on the bank to get a better look. Let's see if we can kind of coax this guy out of his hiding spot here. Come here. What's up, dude? Come here. Come out. That is a beautiful snake. I mean, they definitely come a lot prettier around here, but that is fantastic. Hey, easy, bud. <laughs> Look at him rattling his tail. It's so early that the light out here isn't very good, but you can see this guy is super dark. It's not a very big cotton mouth. I mean, I'm at a safe distance here, but very dark. And that is generally what I see in this area. And uh, this is my first time finding one in habitat here. All the other ones I've found in this area have been on the road. So very, very cool to see this guy. And uh, like I said, I've seen much, much prettier ones here. I love this dark look on cotton mouse. Those white highlights look so good on that dark background color. Just a very good looking snake. But I'm gonna get some quick photos of this guy and we'll let him slink back into the creek and maybe we'll see another one. All right, I have released this guy back into the creek and he went right back to that root ball where he fled to when we first found him, so. We're going to keep walking. Maybe we'll find another one. But if we don't, I'm pretty happy with that. Very, very cool. Nice cottonmouth right here, only about 20 minutes from home at a spot I've never hiked before. So this track right here is armadillo. And uh, you can tell it's the tail of an armadillo and not a snake because there's no pushing. It's just a drag. If it was a snake, you would see where it had pushed itself along. But instead, the tail was just drug along, and that's why it's such a fluid trail in the sand 
rather than a wavy one. Man, the cicadas are loud already. This area looks pretty good. It's getting good light. But I do not see anybody. Bluebird skies today, so as soon as the sun starts hitting the creek, it's going to be hot, hot, hot. Well, I'm on my way home, and we have what appears to be a guy in the road right here. It's a stink pot. Dude, it's hot. Like, unfathomably hot right now. All right, dude, we'll get him out of the road. That was definitely a nice surprise, though. I thought my day was over. Um, but very unexpected little uh, common musk turtle on the way home. We're just going to put him right over here and uh, probably call it a day there. Actually, I'm going to check on one thing when I get home, and I'll run an outro then. Look at this little guy. If I can get him to pop out. Did you see him? He's zooming around. There he is. Ooh. Where'd he go? There he is. That is a little shrew. <laughs> he is so fast. Look at how cute. <laughs> All right, we'll leave him alone. I know he's probably pretty hot under here. All right, here's our piece that's had fossorial dudes under it pretty reliably the last couple of times. What is going on there? Is he striped? Or has he just got mud on him? <laughs> I can't really tell what I'm looking at. Look at that. That is so weird. I think he's just got a weird layer of mud on him, but I'm gonna pick him up and see. That is super strange. So yeah, this is a different ring neck, and he did in fact just have a weird line of mud or pollen or something. Are you gonna bite me? Dude, what you got your mouth open for? He's trying to bite me. Ring neck bite. Look, here it is, here it is, he's gonna do it. He's having a hard time finding a place to latch on, but he's trying. Either way, very weird to see a ring neck trying to bite, and even weirder to see how he looked with that little straight line of mud. I thought we found a striped ring neck at first. But uh, I'll let this guy go before he actually does successfully bite me. There you go. All right, this is one of the pieces of cover that had skink eggs under it last time we checked. And they should be due to hatch soon if they haven't already. And it looks like they already have because I think they were right there. And I do not see any. It's possible they're under this and I just don't remember where they were at though. Yeah, they were under that other one and they have already hatched. All right, so what I wanted to check on is this tin stack here. Last time I looked, had a very gravid red-bellied snake. And uh, the last couple times we've been out, we've seen females that have already had their babies. So I'm hoping that she has had her babies or will be having them very soon. But just wanted to check and see if she's here to end the episode. And there she is. Look at how thick she is. She's still got the babies. And I, I assume that they're going to be arriving any day now, so we're just going to gently lower this and hopefully we'll be able to see her with them at some point in the near future. So yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. The finds were pretty few and far between, but I think it was more of a quality over quantity episode, which I prefer anyways. But yeah, only a couple more weeks till we leave for our international trip. I'll be leaving in the middle of August, so we've got about maybe two and a half weeks before departure. And uh, during that time, I'm going to try to make the most of this time of year. I'm going to wrap this up here, though. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.